Hello and welcome to video number one, Phatic Communication. Our objectives today are to be able to describe what Phatic Communication is, give you a little bit more history and details, and some practical applications. So, definition, Phatic, it's an adjective. Denoting speech used to express or create an atmosphere of shared feelings, goodwill, or sociability rather than to impart information, that is phatic communication. Who discovered it? Well, this phrase was coined almost a century ago by this gentleman. Let me get his name up here. Brunislaw Malinowski. That guy. And he described it as a type of speech in which ties of unions are created by a mere exchange of words. Or more pithily, a speech communication, which is used to establish social relations. So, phatic communication, what is it? Well, it's, as stated in the slide, it, one, it's denoting or relating to language and is used to establish a mood of sociability instead of conveying information. This is more specifically known as phatic speech, phatic communication, phatic language, social tokens, and chit-chat. Phatic communication, such as uh-huh or how are you, is meant to prolong conversation. Mainly, phatic communication is a greeting or to say goodbye. So, why do we use phatic communication? What's the big deal about? Well, a good question would be why. And it's also a long-debated topic, and meaning linguistics have researched this topic a lot. Top scholars have written that speech promotes warmth and connection between people, which is a great definition of the phatic part of language. People are social creatures, and even when we have nothing to stay, say, we still wish to talk. There are many interesting and informative observations done by those who study language. So we're going to have a little bit of an activity. What are some times that you have used phatic communication in your daily lives? How did it add up to the conversation? Now, think of those times that you didn't use phatic communication, but could have to made your conversations a little more pleasant or welcoming. Did others react when you didn't use phatic communication? Take a minute and let's think about it. One easy example of this is when you're going through a drive through at a fast food restaurant. Sometimes it's easier just to say, hey, I want a number two, versus, hi, how are you? Can I get a number two, please? That is one example that I thought of. So, phatic communication examples. We have a few examples of phatic communication in the form of greetings. There's also back-channeling, linguistics, and conversations. Now, these examples show conversation starters and also conversation helpers. And they show ways to extend conversation without truly adding or saying anything important. As phatic communication is a way to contribute to our relationships, ending a conversation is also a way to allow you to peer into what you wish to stay connected with. So here we see a cartoon and one of the characters is saying, I worry that Facebook is killing meaningful conversations communication. Well, their friend is saying, like, this picture could show that although people say that social media and other social media connections are killing communication, this could also be happening in real life. Sometimes it's also easier when using social media in an online platform not to be as polite and courteous as we might be in real life. Now, why do we use phatic communication? What's the big point? Phatic language keeps the channel of communication open, allowing individuals to bring more ideas and opinions to the table. It allows people to share feelings and establish communication that doesn't seek or offer information of intrinsic value. It's the term small talk. Phatic communications are very meaningful because they imply social recognition by sharing our thoughts and feelings with others. Phatic communication also allows us to engage in simple chit-chat 
or idle small talk, thus increasing communication between peers. Now, we have another comic here, and it's three friends all chatting at once. The one friend is asking, hey, how are you? Common question. And the other friend way overshares. And honestly, they're a little shocked at the end because they say, people are meant to say I'm fine and then change the subject. And the one friend says, how conventional of you. By simply asking, how are you? We're not necessarily wanting a true answer we just want the answer that we expect, which is usually, I'm fine or doing well, thanks. When to use Vedic language? Well, Vedic communication is often used for expressing politeness, maintaining that social distance, and for friendship, shortening that social distance. It can also be used for creating friendships, eliminating the social distance. Vedic communication doesn't extend an invitation to have a real conversation though. It's usually just that filler between potentially an awkward silence or trying to get someone to do something you need them to do. So let's review. Phatic communication is simply small talk. It's one, one of its only purposes is to increase social bonds and limit those distances. Phatic communication is neither particularly informative or deep. Think of it as filling those small spaces of time. And now, can you think of your own examples of phatic communication? Where have you used this? And maybe where should you? Thanks. And stay tuned for video number two, where we'll talk about phatic communication and a little deeper level.